Hey, welcome to Creative for More, the podcast. Over here, our conversations are centered around birthing the more that exists within you. We help you mine your originality, live more resiliently, and leverage all of your experiences so that you can serve the world as the highest expression of yourself. My guests will challenge your thinking and give you practical insights for being more, doing more, and having more. My name is Tom Bramuswagu, and I am your host. Let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome. Welcome to today's installment of Created for More, the podcast. (laughs) I've got another exciting episode for you. I have got a trailblazer, literally, that's what I've called her a few seconds ago, in the studios with me. Her name is Valerie O. Lawson and Valerie is a multiple award-winning makeup artist. She's um, an educator. She's a beauty marketing powerhouse. Yes, you heard that. Who merges raw talent, business skill, professionalism, and integrity to push the boundaries of the beauty landscape globally. Valerie's bio is very impressive, like literally very impressive, but let's hear it from your mouth, (laughs) who you are, what you've done, and and generally what the essence of you is beyond the scripting, Mm -hmm. you know, who who is Valerie Lawson? (laughs) Okay, so thank you for the introduction. So I'm Valerie Lawson. Um, I wear different hats at different times, but um, basically, um, a woman who believes in God, whose values are grounded in God, and God is it has been trusting me with different roles and different hats. Some of the hats I wear are I work in the capacity of a makeup artist. I work in the capacity as an educator, um, and I also work in the capacity of a marketing strategist where I, I consult for brands and I speak to brands and help them, you know, figure out where they are, where they want to be and who they want to reach, um, the best way to go about stuff like that. But yes, that's basically who I am in a nutshell. Oh, yes. Love it, love it, love it. And, and is, this, is this who you envisioned yourself to be when you were young? Like all the things that you do now, have there been kind of like pointers when you were younger that you know you would somehow land around this yes i think that well if if you're talking about the beauty aspect i had no clue that i'll be in the beauty space at all what 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 everybody knew or what i knew i wanted to do was i wanted to be in fashion (laughs) because my mom was a fashion designer so i was yes i'll always have like piles of paper and I was very good at sketching like sketching clothes or sketching an outfit because that's what I could see so I was always artistic always and then when I was when I went to school I loved mathematics then it progressed to business so I love numbers so I always knew I would do something between art and business right but I had no clue that I would go into beauty at all and so I struggled a lot in the beginning um, respecting the space first of all and then yes and then retuning my mind to okay this is what God wants me to do so I'm going to go and get and surrender to it and see where it takes me yes mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, what, so what was that like for you initially just that call to make up because that's what I'm hearing you say like mm-hmm. what it would- this but somehow you just felt this call because i because on this show it's created for more and and i always talk about this alignment between Mm -hmm. you know your who who you are there has to be like an alignment that runs through completely so how do you how did you recognize that this was a calling for you at the time yes okay so I'll give you a little background story, right? Um, after after secondary school, usually we have a one year break in Ghana. Yeah. So yeah. I was in the states. I was living with my auntie, you know, just relaxing. And then um, I went with her to a Mac store, and she had broken out, or she had like an allergic reaction, and she needed products to cover up her makeup. And this is like a good sixteen years ago ish. Or 15 years ago so that was the time when makeup was just catching on so it's the beat era where people mm-hmm. were saying you're beat to the gods you know it wasn't subtle makeup at all it was proper caked face mm-hmm. and she she's my mom's sister so she's older or elderly 
and she definitely did not want the beat look. So I was watching what they were doing, what the artist was doing. And for some reason, I never um, played with makeup, nothing like that, because my mom wouldn't allow it. I think the most I had done was like lip gloss. But for some reason, when they started working, oh, I was, mm, I think I was like maybe 15, 16. Yes, yes. And um, apart from not not being allowed, I didn't have enough money to be playing with makeup. I had to choose what I <laughs> what I wanted to spend my money on <laughs> most of the time. Yes, so I was watching what the artist was doing on hair, and because I have an artistic background or an artistic gift, it made sense what what was happening. Like I could see why they were putting a certain texture on her skin. I could see. I could understand why certain undertone was going at certain areas i could understand why they were highlighting and why they were it made sense to me so it sh- i was looking at her like okay so this is like a canvas so then i i, I really respected the art of it because i was like oh wow this is really art as well it was a different side of art that i was not privy to oh. so i i looked at it but i also because of the business aspect i was able also able to like decipher that they were giving her way too many products and they were doing too much like three times more than they should do Mm. and so we get home and you know usually when you go to like a sephora or a mac you know you and you get to the counter you just trust these beauty assistants we get home and they've given her about 15 products and she's like i'm not interested in these (laughs) 50 steps so i said Mm. to her you know what tomorrow in the morning when you're going out let me just from what I remember, let me just try and reduce the products for you and let's see. And she said, okay, cool. So in the morning I tried, I I used my mind, you know, with what I had just picked up from the artist, from watching the artist. And I reduced her steps to about five products and she loved it because it wasn't as cakey. It was natural. It did what it had to do, which is conceal um, her spots without making her look like she had you know, overly caked her face. And then she gave me the rest of the products. So automatically I had like 10 MAC cosmetic products. And when I was coming, I, I, when I was coming back to Ghana to uni, I, I, at that time I was like playing with it, you know, because I was like uh, intrigued about it. And my aunt said, you're actually really good at it. So when I was coming back to Ghana for uni, she bought me more stuff. My mom also contributed, bought me a few things. I said, you know what, just play with it. When you get there, let's see what, what happens with it. And that was a very casual, very nonchalant, like very, very casual. Then um, my, I came to, I was in uni. I think I was playing with it with my friends. When they're going out, I'll help them dress up. And then I post, I'll post on Instagram. So that is where the change happened for me. The first change happened for me. Instagram had just come on and everybody was hopping onto it. Right, and my my brother, I remember my brother was the one who explained to me that it was a, it was like a photo album online. It was not as commercial as it is now at all. So I I would just um, post whatever. So from food to makeup to my friends, you know, all of that. And then Printex, which is a wax print company, reached out to me. Somebody from Printex reached out and said, "Hey, are you a makeup artist?" I said, "No, I'm not a makeup artist." <laughs> I'm a business school student. I'm not a makeup artist. And they said, okay, okay, thank you so much. They called the next day and they said, hey, um, we're not able to find someone, but we're pressed with time. And we really appreciate if you can work on models for us for a campaign. And I said, okay, um, I think I can do something, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not a professional makeup artist. And then the lady said, I think you can do it. And I think she was, you know, she was going to be in trouble if she didn't find someone. So she was pushing me. So I said, okay, cool. They paid me close to nothing. I went, I had 10 models to work on. (laughs) I had so many people to work on. But then because I was not in my head a makeup artist, I did the most simple natural makeup. And that's what set me apart. Because remember when that era where everybody was doing full caked makeup. So that is where my journey as an artist started you know yes and you're asking at what point did I realize that 
it was a calling or it was what God what God wanted me to do. Yeah. Yes, it wasn't even at that point. It was about two years later when I doubled in it and I was making some decent money. I was in marketing class and they asked us to create a company or reach out to a company and apply certain um, principles and skills that they were teaching us in marketing class in business school. And all the companies I was reaching out to were saying, no, 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 they don't have time, you know, cause you're a uni girl. They just don't take you seriously. And so my friend, who's my friend, is still my friend now, she said to me, who was in my group chat, group, um, who was in my group, she said to me, Valerie, you have something, you know, so maybe let's just use it because we don't even have that much time. And so we started to apply the principles that they were teaching me in business school. And immediately I applied those principles. I realized that people, a certain caliber of people were trusting me to, um, Yes, to book me. They'll trust me with the amounts that I was demanding. We increased the amounts. We, we tweaked our packages. We created like different things. And then it just sets us apart completely. Mm. And so from there, I started saying, oh my God, there's something here. Because that kind of money, I wasn't seeing it at all. My father was not giving me that kind of allowance. <laughs> you know, and so it was my first rush at like, okay, there's something here for me. And in that time, I was also seeking God. So I was praying a lot. I was um, asking questions and he would speak to me in the in the moment, you know, and say, I, I had so many times that trust, you know, where I'm putting you. And God will always tell, tell me that even if he tells me to wash, <laughs> I'm sorry to say that on your podcast, but even if he tells me to wash underwear, <laughs> underwear for somebody, wow. I should be diligent in it. You know, I, I should be diligent in it. And he would set me apart, you know. So I just yeah. said, okay, listen, I'm going to trust God. Um, everybody wants me to go and be a banker and they want you to do this That's and be you know. like not the pressure of African yes. parents yeah. and all that. Yes, yes. So that's basically how it started and that's how um I, I decided that after school I wasn't going to go into anything else. I've only done makeup my entire career, working or working life. Um and I decided I was just going to focus and 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 working then apply myself in this space yes i i absolutely love it and a couple of things that i think are worth um highlighting you talked about how your your auntie and your mom bought you a few products yes. at that point where they realized that there was something special that you had a unique mm-hmm. gift mm-hmm. you know and and i think it's very instructive as mm-hmm. to you know how we should how we should um support people when we see when we see a spark because yeah. most time imagine if that had been diminished imagine if they had said oh this, this i mean this is normal yes and you, you didn't have that opportunity to be playing around and eventually then obviously started the instagram page mm-hmm. maybe you would have still been discovered though but it might have taken long long time yes Yes, and then there is something about an appointed time. You know, there was just you needed to have gone through that place to be in that exact position yes. to have been covered, and from there, you know, everything else then just aligns. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it, yeah. and I and I love when you talk about just that point of distinction, and and I think I I think I want to just really really lean into it. The fact the fact that everyone is going one way doesn't mean that you have to adapt. And, yes. and I, it's really interesting that you were able to identify that at such a young age mm-hmm. because you would have thought, ah, okay, ah, this is my opportunity, a big opportunity to work with on this make, um, campaign. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Mm-hmm. Let me be like who, you know, everyone else. Mm-hmm. But some of that moment you chose to be yourself. Tell me mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, so um, I think what helps what has been helping me or what helps me in my life and i've had this since i was young is um i'm okay alone like i have no issues being alone i love solitude i love just being like a recluse you know and so th- this like spotlight life is not my thing i'm not that girl <laughs> you know so i feel like when you when you're okay with yourself at whatever age, and I, f- I wish people have that or develop that younger because the opportunities come younger and the risks come 
you you you're faced with like different risks that you can take that will set you apart but what i've noticed is a lot of people need validation from other people to move right so i yes. feel like yes, yes i feel like the sol- when i when i'm in solitude or when i'm not i'm not seeking people's opinions or i'm not in the midst of human beings and all their opinions i thrive better right it gives you courage because you're only getting you're only hearing from one person, yourself and God. <laughs> and if you are hearing from God and you're you're consecrating yourself a lot more to God, you're hearing his voice louder than whatever you're hearing in your head, right? And if you're feeding yourself with like the word, and I, I had mentioned that in that time, for some reason, I was super hungry for God. I was I was I was searching because I was born a Catholic and I was searching. I knew I didn't want to continue as a Catholic. So I was looking for a church to, to join for some reason. So I'd go, I was going to like different churches. I was exploring. I would ask questions. I'll go to this prayer meeting. I would question the pastor. Like if a pastor asks a question, I would ask him a question back. Like, why are you asking in this direction? Why are we not looking in this direction? You know, I was very curious and very hungry, very empty. And I needed something to fill me. And I was, so I was more and more and more and more in tune with, the voice of God, for some reason, in that same seed seed period of my of my career, and so I think that is what different that's what different like set me apart, is I was able to stand alone and not, you know, do not buckle at people's opinions. Number one and number two, because of that, I had so much confidence and courage because I was reading the word and I was feeding myself with who God said I was and what God said his plans for me were, you know, and granted when you hear those things, you think they are going to happen now. Like when you hear, Oh God say, Oh, I'm going to set you apart. You're thinking it's going to happen in two months. (laughs) And so you're going to apply yourself. But then, yes, but God in his own wisdom, I'm seeing some of the promises God has had said to me manifest now in like 14 years after you know, but because you're so young, he knows how to also like sway you when you're young and keep you, keep you engaged, you know, but I think that relationship with God is important for anybody to first of all, know who they are to secondly, know what he wants them to do, their purpose. And thirdly, know how to, um, endure, you know, through, especially the beginning process and how to navigate that stage. I love it. I love it. So um, I'm just looking on your um, your bio, and I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> the names, just the the, um, the, the the sheer number of things that you've been able to just achieve. It's just been it's just incredible. Thank you. You know, it says on here you're an associate beauty lecturer at um, University of the Arts London. Yes. Founding director of CVL Beauty. Yeah. You were appointed artistic director of Maybelline, New York, Ghana. You're the first yes. artist to be assigned that position um, in Ghana, Africa, mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. also on the board of directors of the obviously the foundation that you have started, Valerie. Yes. Foundation. foundation. Mm-hmm. And it's just that like I'm just blown away. So so now let let's talk about okay. You've built the you started the, the your, your your business. You had your point of differentiation, which is mm-hmm. I'm just going to be, you know, subtle work with you know just that natural beauty and enhanced natural beauty, I suppose, rather than mask it. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you started to see that okay, if I add on or I layer on some of the things I've learned at uni from business, from my, you know, my degree, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I begin to stand out in this way, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That could have been all. That could have been all that you did. If you just did that, you would have prospered. You would have been prosperous. <laughs> yeah. that for you to then start to even go beyond to some of these things that I've mentioned, like what was that pull for you and how did it start? Could you talk us through yeah. just what the next phase was for you when you had just established the brand? Yes, Ghana? yes. I think most of the things or the, the place, the, the roles that I've been applied to um, have come from need. If I, if I really look back, they've come from pure and sheer need, you know, so there's, you see that there's like um, 
a lot of chaos and then God puts you there and tells you this is what you have to do as your assignment. So um, CVL Beauty is my brand. It's a tools and accessories brand and it, it, it was developed from need it, because at the time, um, this is about seven or eight years ago, I had started to give back and well, what I what I decided to do after applying, you know, the business skills and seeing that just tr- training myself or applying new skills set me up as I wanted to be really, really, really established as a makeup artist. So I had, I had decided that I was going to train every year from somebody. So even if it was going to Nigeria, I was going to go to Brazil, I was going to go to America, I was going to go to wherever I had to go. South Africa to learn something new and enhance my skill network, learn from people outside of my little world and bubble, you know, mm-hmm. and what I had known, I knew it was going to set me apart. So I decided to do that. But what I decided as well was I knew how expensive it was to travel, book your own ticket, like book the person, get one-on-one training. It's super, super expensive. So I decided that every year I'll run a masterclass and I'll come back and I'll train. So based on who I meet, if I go to Nigeria, I'll speak to a Nigerian artist. And that year we'll bring them back into Ghana just to give people the opportunity to network and to create community. Right. So we decided that I decided that I was going to do that and I started doing that. And just from talking to makeup artists, once you're you're in community and you have access to a group of people who are in an industry. At that time, we didn't know it was, it was anything called industry because we're all like kind of figuring it out. It wasn't as an, a good, like an established industry yet, but that's what it was. Now that I'm looking, yes, now that I'm looking back. And so once we're in front of people who were in an industry with community, I was hearing the same complaints all the time. So the main complaint was we didn't have access to retail products um, or retailers and We didn't have access to affordable makeup tools and accessories. We had access to, at the time, um, MAC Cosmetics had come into Ghana. People were bringing, you know, all these fancy brands. But to be honest, the tools and accessories aspect of makeup does not have to be a branded, um, like a super expensive, you know, part. Yes. And so I decided that, okay, we're going to make it affordable. We're going to make it in a way that it wasn't, as expensive as a MAC Cosmetics. Because if we're going to get a MAC Cosmetics um, brush set, you're going to be be, be paying about, let's, let's just say, like $600, let's say, if you're going to get, like, a professional set and get extra quantities. But, but what I wanted to do was kind of cut that into... Um, 10%. So you should be able to pay, you should be able to get the same or even better quality and pay 10% of that from a Ghanaian brand. Yes. So that was, yes, that was my, that was my goal was I wanted to cut that down. And when I looked at the numbers, I realized that it could be done, you know, so I started speaking, I went to China, I started speaking to different um, manufacturers and different people and we put out the first one. Um, it was a good, I think the first release was really good. The second release was not that great. And then I took a year off to actually design, like, and not just stick my, my, my label on products, actually design and, um, you know, go back and forth with like manufacturers and different people to make sure that I got it to the specification of an artist, you know, and, um, and that's how it, that's how it started. So it, it, all these roles have come from need and it comes from actually listening to people you know because people are consistently complaining or com- or telling you what their problem is or telling you what their their issue is but if I had also just gone straight into complain 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 I'm also singing along then I will not be the one listening and I'll not be the one with the light bulb you know going off you know so I think that is that is where um, in producing or being being called to ap- apply myself in different roles, I think that's where it set me apart, right? Um, but the, all of those things come also with <laughs> with the negatives. It's like you're the first to do things, and so the risk is higher. You know, you can't see beyond a certain thing, 
or same path if you're the first person to embark on it. And so, yes, all of those things also take a lot of courage, but also, um, um, yeah, it, it takes a lot of courage, basically. Yes, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of, of grit, you know, to push through. Um, yeah, and when it comes to UAL, it's always, I believe, in serendip- serendipity. Um, UAL's role started from when I met my <laughs> I met my husband at the time. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. So he, he his office is in Carnaby Street, and um, Max Max Cosmetics, um, their flagship store is in Carnaby Street as well. So when we met and he had gone through my bio, he walked in. I think it was um, October. October is Black Black history no not black history in the uk it's um not black history black friday? no not black friday it's um it's to celebrate black the black culture mm. but basically it was october and his company works with um works with the community and so he wanted to test you know the beauty angle so he walked in with my with my profile on my portfolio and they bought the idea he was selling right so they they brought me to london and oh, wow he just walked in and, and sold you just like that yes yes <laughs> yes oh, yes <laughs> that's why i married him <laughs> what yes. are you kidding me yes 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 wow. yes but i think that's i think there's strong purpose behind like marriage and you know union and I, I really believe in that so he walked in and i think it was time you know, so he walked in, basically sold me. And before that, we had just spoken about, I told him, you know, I'm, I'm known as a bridal artist. I think I've done, a, by God's grace, a great job in the bridal space. But I feel like physically, I can't keep doing bridal. And I need to start applying myself in the other roles that I've been, you know, um, I've been in the back of, you know, I've been working silently on so that's like the educator role the consulting role I needed to apply myself into that and I knew that was going to be a big jump because I I was super positioned as this girl's a bridal artist the brides yeah. will pay whatever you know they'll pay a premium to have you so it's like you're the person to go to da, 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 da. and I knew that was going to be very tough first of all on my own mental mental because it's bridal that has gotten me this far it is yeah. bridal bookings that have gotten me and the resources that have been able to push into other things so if I'm going to take this kind of jump I need God to really come through for me so I had just spoken to him about that and he then said okay he has this this thing he wants to do with my cosmetics so he's going to pitch it to them and so he walked in one morning and then they got me on a call they were very happy and it was we, we they wanted me to come and train their artists on diversity and inclusion and um to also have a no no actually the first time they brought me in was actually to run a master class so i got in we ran the master class it was a sold out class cuz and and that was mind blowing to me because i had I hadn't been to london at the time it was my first time in london i didn't even know i'm just completely blown away <laughs> speaking and my, my mind is just like I, I i don't get this yes you're telling me that you were coming for you were being imported yes yes imported from ghana <laughs> to the uk yes to come and teach a sold out master class yeah at the mark mark flag, flagship store yes like <laughs> Are you being serious? I'm being 100%. 100% serious. So you don't think that that is even possible? Like, you would think yes. that, A, one, you know, the expertise will be here in country, mm-hmm. you know, in organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and if at all, hey, who would think that? And it talks about positioning. It talks about being able to package properly. Because yes, mm-hmm. your husband to be at the time walked in and, and sold you, but you had done the work in terms yes. of being able to, to package to say, Look, mm-hmm. this is the body of work that I have. This is exactly. what I've been, been able to do. Exactly. To, 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 I, I, and I find it just fascinating. And to think and, and it's also the audacity. The audacity, yes. 
yes. the audacity yes. of it to say like, yes, I can do this. Yes, yes. It, it, it is it is ours for the taking because yes. people don't don't a lot of people just overlook opportunities. Just yeah, they don't people, believe. They would never, yes. they would never consider me. Yes, 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 yes. Hundred percent. Yes, and all the master classes I'd run prior to that were in Ghana, where I knew that I had a following. <laughs> but in the UK, I was like, what, who, who's come to attend? So I had that in the back of my mind. But I was like, look, the way my God works, it's okay, I'll I'll come, I'll come. And then we started to see the numbers go up. And, and it was a paid class. It wasn't a free class. It was a paid class. And so when I came, I met with the MAC team, and they were so sweet. And what I also noticed was when you whenever you're around, I think what sets people apart and what, what makes people um, great is, again, the ability to listen and see beyond, you know, what they're saying. I picked up that they had lost a huge chunk of the market share because, of course, the Fenty Beauties had come in, you know, and they had a, a wide range of, a wide shade range to offer. Then we had the millennial brands, you know, that were more pop and more like the Kylie cosmetics that were more um, attainable by the millennials. So they had lost a huge chunk of, of the, of the, first of all, of the black community and two of just the, the new generation that was coming. And because of TikTok and, you know, all these apps that are pushing beauty and beauty trends, you're going to see it's like they were they were running down as like a mature or being positioned as like a mature brand and they didn't like that positioning and so that's where I said to them you know um after this class can we sit down and discuss also ways that I could come in and help you and consult because that's where the consultancy comes in so during the class they were super super happy with first of all the turnout people bought um I was able to get people to see let's say uh their conceal and correct palette is is a, is a palette that artists are artists buy but everyday women don't buy because they don't understand like why they should have six shades mm -hmm. yeah. and use only one shade but then i was able to show people that it's multifunctional you can use it to warm your skin you can use it in this way you can use it in that way and so they sold out on those products and they're super happy about that super happy and so when we had our catch up um, conversation after the class, they said, you know what, I, we will want you to come and train our staff nationwide, you know. And so I said, OK, OK, I think I can do that. And they wanted me to train them on how to use their products, um, the multifunctionality of it, because they had seen me do that with the, oh. the people who had come, who had attended the master class. Yeah. And then they also wanted wanted me to consult, to kind of advise on um, how they can work on getting into the market that they've lost, you know, and also boost the confidence of their artists because now because there's TikTok and there's um, you know just social media in general, if you don't treat or you don't know how to work on brown skin, anybody will put you on blast quickly. It's, yeah, it's a very, very unforgiving. Very Yes, it's a very unforgiving space. And so a lot of the artists were also losing confidence, you know, with dealing with with brown skin. And so they wanted me to teach them basically on like diversity and inclusivity, talk to them about it, just be relatable, hear the perspective of a brown girl and a brown artist who has a USP because I'm from a place like Africa where I'm, where I'm exposed to a wider shade range, you know, in my everyday life you know work life um so based on that another brand saw me which was London College of Beauty Therapy they invited me to speak at their event at their to their students and then um there was another guy who was <laughs> very interesting yeah as I said I believe I believe in like um, purpose behind purpose behind purpose so after that after that there was the guy who was filming my entire process or my entire engagement in the UK he was a UAL student and he said he feels like he needs to introduce me to um, the person who's lead artist for makeup and beauty in UAL so they sent a this he put together a video sent that with a deck um, to the lady and the lady invited me got me to come behind you know backstage for London London Fashion Week 
um, for me to speak with the girls or the, or the students in the class. And then one thing led to the other, led to the other, and they, they, they called me in for the associate lecturer role. So that's how that's happened. It's been one thing on top of another, on top of another, yes. But that's how connected it's been. Well, whilst you're at it, why don't you just tell us about the artistic director, the director role at Mabel in New York? Yes. Okay, so that happened just before COVID. Um, That happened in 2019. And... I remember that's also another very interesting. <laughs> I feel like anytime I'm telling these stories, people will just be like, "This girl." <laughs> that also happened very interestingly. Um, I, I was not. I mean, I'm. I'm not positioned as like a Maybelline artist at all. I had no um, prior engagement or prior workings with L'Oreal or Maybelline right before that and they had been in Ghana for a long time but we just had not been given the opportunity to work with each other and so one day uh, a friend of mine called me and she said hey um have you had a an email from anybody from Maybelline and I said oh yeah yeah I saw something this morning but I put it in spam because I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't, you know, at the time, everybody was, like, you'd be there, you get a message, an email from Vogue, when you Google it, it's like, oh, it's, um, it's fraud, you know, yeah. so I saw an email from the managing director for West Africa, Maybelline, L'Oreal, I was like, okay, so I just put it in, because I was, I, at the time, I was not working, I had no idea that I'll do anything in consultancy or direction, artistic direction, nothing, and so I just put that in spam, just assuming. And she said, no, 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 no. So she said to me, this gentleman, it was a man, walked into her, she, she had a school at the time, walked into her school and um, she was ranting about <laughs> the people who have to get, who are working very hard and who are investing in their craft in spaces like teaching, unconventional spaces, so teaching um beauty, artistry, fashion, music, them not getting opportunities. And this man was dropping off his his daughter. This was summer school. And he had her ranting to someone and he kind of chimed in. So when she mentioned, she she was mentioning like, okay, Tombra, who does podcasts, Valerie, who does makeup. She had no idea who he was. And he said, okay, what, what did you say about the person who does beauty or makeup? And he, she, she mentioned my name. So he just put it in the back of his head. <laughs> I know. And he just engaged. Yes, he just engaged with her and then he left. So then um, I got the email like that afternoon saying that he wanted to have a meeting. He was traveling in that week and he wanted to meet me before the week ended. I was like, okay. So I said to her, okay, okay, I'm going to reply to this man. So I replied, I went to meet with him and he was like, this is what the offer is. He had that opportunity since January, but he had only heard about me in July. He was looking for who this role was meant for. At the time in that year, I had won uh, Makeup Artist of the Year. I had run a beauty, a bridal campaign in collaboration with like other bridal vendors and these are initiatives that were taking so much money and time and we were not seeing like direct monetary um value but all of a sudden it was opening send doors because people were realizing that I'm not just a makeup artist I could actually artistically direct a campaign which is not even how I was looking at anything I was looking at it like I'm an artistic person I have I can think of like an idea and just apply myself and see opportunity in it and pull people and create some sort of collaboration. But I didn't understand that that was a whole role on its own. And so that when he did his research, those were the things that were coming up. And he was like, this is the person that I've been looking for for the past five months. Yes. And so, yes. And that was how that came about truly. That's literally the story of the artistic role. And um, I think that that really spoke to me that year because um, it was just out of nowhere. I didn't even know it was going to be the first appointment. I didn't know anything about, you know, all the 
things around it, you know. And after COVID, I mean, after that year, COVID hit. We had we all didn't have a, a clue. And they needed, we realized that they needed somebody, in hindsight, to be the middle person between um, the brand and the people. And I was able to play that role because I was now positioned as that. People were asking questions. Were able to. I was able to create content in my apartment because we're not allowed to go anywhere, you know. So it was. It just beautifully worked out just for worked that. Out. Exactly. It just beautifully worked out in hindsight. And there's a casting down. You say there's a lifting up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so that's how that role came about. That's literally how that role came about. Yes, and I I love thank you thank you so much for for just you know elaborating on that. There was something you touched on that I thought I I I, I think is so worth putting meat on, and this is this um, the conundrum of money versus impact, mm-hmm. balancing financial stability with something you believe very much to be you know something you're doing um as a call or purposeful generally in general mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you talked about you had put all this beauty campaign to doing all these things and it's just like i'm just you know draining money is just going what is this what is it yielding but obviously yes. somewhere in that i'm sure you believe that you are doing it for a reason but just talk us through because there's so many people that you know they're, they're not able to fully navigate this thing so it's like yes. it's either they sway too much towards money or they sway too much towards impact what has your journey been when it comes to money versus impact okay i think money is important i'll just have to put that out there i'm not one of those who say you know <laughs> you know you do it because you love no 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 no. money sustains you money will will give you growth you know and so what i was able to do and i was, I was discussing this with with my husband just this week where um i was saying that i i'm not i'm not seeing the drive in young people you know at that time i i just believed that i was young and i had no excuses i just believed that in my mind Mm -hmm. and so i knew that if i had 24 hours what time do i want to wake up what time do i want to do this what time do i want to do that and i would look and look so deeply into risks and try to make up just in case there's, you know, um, it goes really left, right? Mm -hmm. So at the time I was doing the campaigns, we'll pay for, let's say, feeding alone, feeding the entire crew from the deck of people, which they'll be like, (laughs) let's say, let's say minimum five people, six people, then um, the makeup myself, my, my team, videography, photography, their team, models designer their team Mm -hmm. and i was i was funding this myself right Mm -hmm. so you can imagine that we're paying the models and you pay this person and you pay that person so so much money was going into into these and apart from the campaigns we're also creating assets i don't know for what reason but i just knew i had to create assets and it wasn't a thing as it is now so a lot of people, if you go down, it, when, when there was IGTV, you see that I had so much engagement as well because it was something that a lot of people were not doing. But on the other side, I was making up for that by working more jobs because I knew how much was coming out. I couldn't just leave it to chance. As much as I believed that something will come out of it, I just don't know what will come out of it. Oh. I, I knew that I had to make up for the money that was coming out. So I'll set tighter goals for myself. And I had no excuse. I, don't, I didn't have kids. I didn't ha- have a husband. Like, what am I, what am I, what's my excuse? You're young, you know? And that's what I think is lacking now. And it makes me so sad because... It's just a matter of applying yourself. I say this all the time to my team. Like it's just a matter of applying yourself when you don't have these these um hinge quote unquote hindrances or these responsibilities. It frees up your time, and so prioritize the things that will make you a better person in the next two, just even two years, versus the things that will not make you a better person in two years. And those conversations must happen internally. It's not something I can drum down your ear. You must believe. You must want that for yourself, right? Yes. So I would. Um, I knew that bridal was where I was. I was 
in high demand. And so I'll, I'll go up a bit on, on my price. I'll put a premium on my price or I'll create a package where there's a premium. And I was being booked because I what I did was I, I was able to tie in um, some of these campaigns to because it was a bridal campaign. It was things that were feeding or acting as marketing tools for um, the service I was providing, right? Mm-hmm. So you see that people were, and it wasn't just me benefiting, it was the entire collective. So the collective mm-hmm. found value. We're looking forward to the next one. The industry found value because now people were respecting like the Kinte, our, our, fab, our, our national fabric, we put it on the map. Um, Decor was getting value. So now people were trying to book us as a collective and that was making us a stronger force, you know, in the industry. Then, um, when it came to like commercial shoots and commercial campaigns, you know, I didn't have a clue where that would come. I actually thought that would only feed me through YouTube. So yes, we were getting numbers on YouTube and we're getting, you know, exposure on YouTube, but it brought on a whole different side, right? But at the end of the day, I made sure that I was making, I was kind of making some extra money. I spread myself thin, but I think Every, in everyone's career journey, there should be a period where you're enduring. You know, you must you must spread yourself thin to a certain level, not to be unhealthy and not to do that forever. But you must believe that what you're doing is a risk and you must commit to that risk, you know, and spread yourself thin. It's just like in the Bible says, after you've endured for a while, I will establish you, you know. So it's just like that. You must endure for a while. There's a period of endurance that you have to go through in a com- in any commitment, marriage, children, business journey, friendship. There's a period of endurance that must happen. And then there's a reward or a harvest period as well, you know. So that's, for me, I really, I really think a lot of young people are lacking that commitment. I don't know what the hindrance is, whether it's the pressure from social media or the rush to rise quickly. Yeah. But I really, really wish... Microwave yes. Generation, they call it. Yes. Microwave generation. Everybody just wants yes. to it now. Yes. So I think it's really important that People, you know, step, take a step back and have that internal conversation with themselves because that's the only way it's honesty with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm not having those honest conversations with myself and saying, you know what, Valerie, you're, it's like faith and delusion. You're, you're either being very, you're either exercising your faith very strongly or you're being delusional. But then how do we mitigate the risks of if I'm being delusional, what is going to happen? right so that's where you have to have the internal conversation and see what other avenues you can use to support yourself i love that so what i hear you say is money is important so mm-hmm. you look at the parts of um you, you looked at the parts of your business where you could charge a premium so you got money mm-hmm. from that and you invested mm-hmm. you know, parts of that into the other areas that were important to you from an yes is that what you're yes yes 100 percent. and if you look at that now if you look at the parts that i invested from bridal those are the parts that are sustaining us now mm. yes those are the parts that are sustaining us now because bridal takes so much time and energy and effort and i'm 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 weaning out of bridal but if you look at that now if I hadn't, if God hadn't instructed me to do that, I wasn't obedient to do that. I didn't endure in those times when I didn't fully understand and fully see a picture and fully see, you know, what the harvest would be. I would have completely missed this period because um, nothing would have been seeded, you know. So it was like in my peak in once in one role, I was also in my baby season in another role. So that peak had to feed the baby season, if that makes sense. So yes good. so good so so good i love that that's that's quotable <laughs> yeah. i love it, oh, love it. And, and yes. yeah it's just that recognizing that that you know well in life there are different seasons and you might be in different seasons in yes. across layers of your life at the same time yeah. And it and it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Yes. Yes. Uh, this has been an enchanting conversation. I um I I how I bumped on an interview you did with 
glamour magazine and it's really really interesting oh yes about the definition of a woman's beauty mm -hmm. and about three key things uniqueness you know, internal uh, intentional kindness and courage and i thought that was just really really interesting you said mm -hmm. you know, it's not just physical it cuts across these things so you know mm -hmm. can you just elaborate a little bit on that Yes, absolutely. So I think I've been super, super blessed in my career because I've met all sorts of strong women, like women in very powerful positions. Um, I've not just met them, I've worked, you know, one-on-one -on -one with them. And the unique, the unique thing about being a makeup artist is you meet the woman you know, in the, the one who comes to sit in your chair is, is the woman. And then you prepare them for the role they are going to, you know, be be paraded for. <laughs> so, for instance, um, last this year, I worked on the vice president of America, Kamala Harris, while she was in Ghana. And I met the woman. So we're talking about, you know, woman stuff. Just no politics, no gimmicks, <laughs> no nothing. Mm -hmm. Just plain woman to woman because that's you're so close to the person. Um, and then you meet the woman. All the strong personalities I've met in my career that I've worked with, you go through all the security, you go through all the, 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 the very intimidating things you have to go through as an artist who's coming to them. And then when they meet you and the, and the vibe is right, um, you just meet up like most of the time, the most humble, beautiful souls, mm -hmm. you know, and it leaves such a lasting Im impression. So for me, um, based on my experience meeting some of these women, I know that these are some of the most beautiful, beautiful human beings I've ever met, you know. So to me, it's not about like beauty standards and your eyes have to be a certain dimension. Like I saw... Um, they said Gigi Hadid was the most beautiful woman in the world. And then they had put all sorts of dimensions on her eye, her nose ratio to her lip. I was, I was oh. like, what are we even doing, you know, as a society? But it's really about how, how beautiful you are to another person, like how from within, right? Yes, outside is nice and what I do enhances outside. But I've also met some very beautiful, pretty girls who I personally would never want to meet again or work with because I didn't enjoy the experience with them, right? So how do you make people feel? How comfortable do you make people feel? How um, kind are you? You know, how does your integrity work? Um, what are your values? You know, that to me is what, is what beauty is, is all about. I love it. I love it. What do you think, just off the back of that, I feel like I want to tag a question on just really quickly. What do you think holds women back the most? You've sat, like, there have been so many women who have been sat on your chair. So if anybody knows women, it's you. Yes, yes, yes. I work with women. I work for women. Women work with me. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, um... I really think it's, hmm, I think it's an identity issue. I think it's an identity issue that holds women back. I think when a woman doesn't understand who she is, then she falls into the stereotype, the negative stereotypes of women, which would be like doing the cheap things to get ahead. So the cheap, th what I, what I coined the cheap things would be, um, uh, Things that will self sabotage, right? So gossiping, um, wasting your time, or bad mouthing someone, thinking that you know you get a job. Maybe you get a job, but you just cheapened your your way in. So it's anything. I don't believe anyone can sabotage you to the point where you it it it, it cripples you. No, I think what breaks people, what holds people back, is things that they can control. Right. So I think it's it's really an identity thing. And if you don't pull yourself back, especially in our industry where it can look very, very like 
just talent and not business and not serious like like there's purpose behind beauty people can just look at it as a vain thing you can end up playing a very cheap game you know and when you do that one you waste your time two you don't um you don't you're not humble because you think you know you're like things that are going to send people should come to you you stop just being just being silly in your mind and just small mindedness yes you just start being very small minded and so i really think identity and just i once people are able to seclude themselves from the clicks and the the group chats and the opinions of people and just look at things objectively and look at the bigger picture though the bigger picture will always bring you back into like reality you know mm-hmm. instead of the little games that that women play you know but women are so blessed i think we we can clearly see that we're in an era where women have been super empowered yes. it's like a a wave a spiritual wave has been or a door has been opened for women where there's so much that women have access to yeah. but we just should not play the small game we small should game. dream big you know dream big believe in yourself look at people credit people who have gone ahead of you one of the things that's sad in in the fashion and beauty industry is a lot of new artists disrespect the older artists but then it's the, it's the most unfortunate thing you could ever do because in any industry whether it's relig- the religious industries or the, the beauty, any industry at all, the people who have gone ahead of you have experience, you know, and that's something you're lacking. And if you don't honor those people, you don't, um, you think, you know, you can come in and you would do better automatically. It's like spiritually, you kind of cut yourself short, right? So you have to honor the people who have opened certain doors, and that's something that just learning these principles and these cultures, you know, and making that part of us as an industry is super important, you know. And um, yeah, I think I think that's it. <laughs> just so I'm not rambling. <laughs> oh, so good. There was something you said that uh, so powerful. You talked about that, you know, the thing that holds women back would, you know, more often than not be within their control. Yes, yeah, so that's so powerful, so instructive. Because we're always thinking, oh, it's because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here because of something I don't yes. have. Yes, yes, yes. Whilst we're missing the point, that yes, for you to get to your next level, most of the time it will be things that are within your control. And yes, network leveraging networks that you already have. You yes, you already know. Yes, you just think you know what it's out of. You know they don't have anything for me, or you don't even try because mm-hmm. you just think you're not good enough for Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and um, i think it's so instructive Mm -hmm. yes so powerful thank you Um, i wanted you to talk just as we close about valerie cares your foundation what is yes yes uh, yeah just just share that share that a little bit yes so valerie cares foundation is um and a foundation i essentially started officially um two years ago where because I was transitioned out of the bridal space, I don't believe you just transition or you you move and then you close the door. No, I think you, because I've had experience and I've seen a lot of concern, a lot of concerning topics <laughs> in the bridal space where makeup artists, bridal makeup artists are getting abused. Some people are getting cheated, bullied. Um, some people just don't have knowledge on certain things. There's knowledge gaps and barriers, location barriers, you know, that's that's stopping people from, p- people in different towns from progressing as fast as other people in different towns. Um, I decided that I was going to officially um, register my foundation and and work through education to improve lives of young women who are makeup artists and also to increase industry standards, right? Because we can't just, if we're improving the lives, you're automatically increasing industry standards, yeah. right? So that's the main goal of Valerie Cares Foundation. And what happened was the year that I decided to do that, I had been praying about it. It was a tough year. But I remember I'll tell um, the, the ladies on my team, this is the year I'm supposed to do this. I have dreams, like 
very vivid dreams about working with women like a bunch of women and it was around something around education or training and i could see the ripple effect of what that was going to do so i took the bold step in the year of transition and the year of quietness from god i took the bold step of opening the foundation and my brother called me one day and said um you know, somebody had sent me an email, but they sent it to my old email address. So he just wanted me to check on it because they had had prompted him. So I did, and it was um, a lady from the All Foundation. Her name was Chloe. So Chloe had emailed me and said she works with the All Foundation, and what they do is they work against fast fashion. So, and the ripple effects of fast fashion, right? So that's from the environmental effects of fast fashion, to the physical effect on the people like the carriers, the head potters who carry, you know, and the, the, the risks and the things that they're exposed to, the the working conditions that they're exposed to. And they were working on rehabilitating some of the people who are affected by this and moving them into industries that have potential where it's a more stable working environment. So she wanted to know if I did anything like that. And I said, oh my God, this must be a sign because I just I just registered the foundation. I just started the process of registering the foundation. And so I said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So I committed to support five ladies from the All Foundation. And we decided that we're not going to. Initially, she was saying, oh, we can do this for like a month to two months. And I said, no, For to create the impact that we need to create, it has to be longer. So we said we're going to work on nine months. This was my first ever <laughs> project, you know, that I was going to embark on. But I think what I I can, I can say um, has caused impact in their lives is the fact that it was a long period. Because we could do the one month thing and we could say, oh, you know, we supported it. You could just do the same coining you know where we say we supported the girls we partnered with the all foundation but then that impact will not be there because first of all that that bond between our educators myself the the ladies who support and the participants will not be there we wouldn't have had time to establish it number two trust where they would have to open up and speak about certain things they're facing truthfully and honestly would not be there. And then the impact where we have to um, impart knowledge to them and, and and speak to them or deal with them on an individual basis because because of where they're coming from, we have to be very careful that we don't um, work with them as a group, but we work with them on individual basis because they're all very unique. So I remember the first time I spoke with the, with the, with those ladies who wanted to work with me, they were just super excited and shy. And they said, um, I asked them, you know, how do you dream or what do you dream of? Like at the end of this, by next year, what do you want to do? And all of them just said they want money for the week. That's their, that was their basic goal. They had, I, I kept probing, like, what do you, do you not want? Like a, if I say a house, they'd be like, Hey, <laughs> you know? you know what's like what do you want what do you i just because i what i wanted was for them to come back into their minds of dreaming because it's dreaming that that probes vision right and it's dreaming that keeps you encouraged so i have a dream i want to do this in the next two years and so i'm going to work towards that those are the things that keep me going but i realized that they they were not dreaming because they had a basic need to fulfill that they were not fulfilling and so that's was keeping them like as prisoners just working this horror in this horrible environment exposing them to deadly things rape abuse you know all of these things and so i decided that okay at the end of this even if they don't become makeup artists i just want to know that these people are dreaming you know and i've been able to spark something in them um at the end of their program which was in April, I believe this year, we spoke with them and to our amazement, we, we, myself and my foundation and the All Foundation, we, we were supporting them with stipends and um, one of them has been able to buy land in the North. What? Yes, one of them has been able to buy land in the North and she wants to retail makeup products. 
Then another one of them is saying that she wants to, she's put a, a, a down payment on a, on, a, on, a, on a house or something she wants to build or land that she wants to build. And so you can see uh, the dream happen and then you can see the work put in. Um, <laughs> you can see the work put in towards the dream and then you can see the community value you know, mm-hmm. so someone like that is going back to the north and is going back to retail, which is going to create jobs for her and her family. So you see a, a change in trajectory of their lives. And that made me so proud, you know, because that is the goal of what we're doing. We're not trying to get people to just become makeup artists. We want to open up different channels in the beauty ecosystem where value can be created and lives can be changed but we want it to happen organically we don't want to like stifle anybody so whilst we're teaching about knowledge and skill you might not apply it as an artist but you apply it as a retailer you might end up applying it as an educator you might end up applying it as a manufacturer you know so that is the goal that's what we that's what basically the foundation is about and um <laughs> after that we were, I was like okay what am I going to do next um and in June last year in July or in August, in August actually last year I got an email from Mastercard Foundation where they wanted to meet with industry leaders in in the creative space because what they were doing was supporting a lot of the agricultural entrepreneurs but they wanted to explore the creative space and their goal was to start exploring the creative space in 2024. But um, they met with myself and Aisha from Christy Brown. And after speaking with them, they decided that they were going to support the foundation because it was something that was already running. And so they decided to, to help to support us to scale or to partner with us to scale up from the five people that I was working with, and I was working with a vulnerable community, which was the Kayas, to young women in the beauty industry who just cannot afford the lengthy training. If we were to put a value on it, they, they usually would not be able to afford it, you know, or have access to it. So I decided to support that and scale that to 100 ladies. You know, so this year, that's what the project is about. We're supporting 60 ladies under the Upskilling Project and then 40 ladies under the, the master masterclasses, the nas- nationwide masterclasses projects. That's what it's about. Yes. Ah, you You're an institution. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting there. <laughs> You're an institution. Like, seriously. I love there. how there's a central theme that runs through everything you said, mm-hmm. you know. It's literally, I was there, somebody reached out. We've heard mm-hmm. how many emails, somebody just reached out. And yes. Somebody sent this. Mm-hmm. And it speaks to the preparedness of yourself, just the, your personal brand, the strength of your personal brand. Mm-hmm. So if you had to give three, you know, top tips mm-hmm. for building a personal brand that is magnetic. Yes. What would they be? Okay. I can't talk about top tips without talking about God because my my entire value system is built around God. And when I was looking for God, one thing I said to God was, I don't want to be the cliched like Christian. I want him to teach me so I can teach people. And I don't want to just, you know, copy and paste what's going around. And so I want him to be as practical to me as practical to my business because that's where that's what I was experiencing in my life or that that was my journey was all I had was my business and the three things that I remember or that I stand on uh identity make sure that my identity is not is not changing like I should know who I am and whose I am right so as a a young entrepreneur woman or man you should know who you are you know, who are you beyond um, the applause? Who are you? What is your value system? Something must anchor your value system, right? Mm-hmm. And must anchor who, how you identify as yourself. There's a whole lot of conversation around identity, but is it real identity where it's internal and you know for sure it's truth that this is who you are, right? Those are things that nobody can touch and nobody can see. And those are the things that will guide you. Right. Then there's perception. 
perception and perspective. So the three is identity, perception, perspective, anything. And I let me just speak on identity and end there. The, the, the main things that play around all these three anchor um, words will be like courage, grit, um, tenacity. tenacity, yes, faith. However, the the fraud boy also plays on those words so i'm not being on those words <laughs> you know what i mean like the fraud boy is very courageous because who's going to tell me to lie in a, in a coffin <laughs> right <laughs> who's going to tell you to kill like your 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 mother or your father is very courageous it's very you know the fraud, enduring is it fraud boy or fraud boy? What, what was that no like a fraud boy or like somebody oh. who is who is going to going to do something spiritual to get ahead in life or you know or do something bad like a bad taking a bad um, yeah, um approach like, to Nigeria, we call it yahoo 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 exactly exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> all of those people like you know all of those all of those they're routes also courageous i love that. they're also so very true. courageous okay. they also have a goal they also have, um, they are also very disciplined. Because if, if you even hear the, the, the thing, the rules they have to abide by, they, it, it takes a lot of discipline. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of faith in what they want to achieve. So I, I can say all of those things, but I don't want to dwell on those um, topics or principles. I think what we need to work on individually and um, together is our identity, our perception, and our perspective. If we're able to fix our identity, right, um, you you look at yourself differently. You carry yourself differently. If I know that I have so much, I, I am supposed to be an educator, I'm supposed to do this, I will start to prepare for those roles. So you start to walk it before you start to manifest it, yeah. right? Then if you look at perception, how do you treat other people? How do you see certain situations, right? Those are the things that's, the internal conversation between myself, other people, and situations. Because these are the, this is life. It is constant conversations with yourself. Situations will arise. COVID will come. Another thing will come up. Um, you, one time you would have money. Another time you wouldn't have money. So what anchors you in those, in those different changing situations, right? So if we're able to get a grasp of these three you know, and we're able to um, align ourselves. To me, I believe my faith is what I align myself with. If, if I'm able to align myself and apply myself properly in these three areas, then I'm good. But it's not something that you can do, um, you know, automatically. It's something you have to feed yourself. You need to learn consistently. And so people need to, people need to really be able to stand alone and I think in this in this era, it's, it's a little difficult for people, but I, I really want to urge people to have more solitude, have more time with God, um, build a real relationship with God so he can teach you. Because there are real, real treasures, like real things that he's going to teach you about yourself first, and then about other people, and then about situations, you know. And there's always a bigger, bigger picture, you know. But for you to get to that bigger picture... You need to, you, identity needs to be fixed. And that's the, the main, that's what I find is the main gap or problem, you know, in, in our society. So good. Identity, perspective, perception, is that what you said? Yes, yes. Love it. Valerie, this has been gold. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. What a conversation. <laughs> this was a, a whole meal, a whole feast. Wherever <laughs> wherever you are on that on the spectrum, you will find something you need on this on this on this um podcast. So thank you so so much for being here, for sharing all of yourself and for inspiring our listeners so greatly. In my final question to you, Yes. What does being created for more mean to you? Hmm, being created for more. Mm. I think that's that's that should be the theme of everyone's life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, I yes, yes, that should be the theme. I think you have such a beautiful a beautiful like um your your podcast identity is so beautiful because 
that's what we, we're created for more. Like you must believe that you're created for more. I look at my life and I look at every situation as um, if an opportunity comes my way or if a situation comes my way, there's about t- at least 10 destinies attached to that. You know, so when you start to look at, at your life that way, then you start to look at your decisions that way. And you start to be more responsible about so many things, how you move, how you, what, who you invite around you, you start to discern a little more because it's not, it's not like just this laissez-faire, you know, go as, you know, get on as you go life. You start to take life a little more seriously. And so being creative for more, I think that should be that, that's, that's basically the theme of everyone's life. We must believe that we've been created for more and that there's so much more for us to give and, we must give and pour out ourselves and empty ourselves before we leave Earth because it's a shame a lot of people get to even 90, 100 and they still have not poured out, you know. And so thank you. Thank you for your, your podcast identity. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's such a beautiful, 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 beautiful um, title or name. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this week on Created for More, the podcast. Make sure you visit my website. I'm at tombra.com where you can subscribe to the show either via iTunes or Spotify so that you never miss a show going forward. You can also follow me on social media. I'm at tombra.moswago. And if you love the show, please, please, please leave a rating on iTunes so that we can continue to bring you amazing episodes. Thanks for listening.